I, I always find this time of year, this in-between period between Christmas Day and New Year's Eve, the oddest week. I've never, to be honest with you, 100% liked it. Does that make sense? I always find it a weird one. Um, it always feels like really odd. I mean, this is the week where, you know, we've had the Jesus celebration, Christmas Day, yes? And the build-up to that particular Christmas Day, it just goes on, doesn't it? Starts somewhere way back in the middle of August, and then eventually it culminates on this day called the 25th of December. And it's a big deal, and then you sort of clear up, don't you? Put all your stuff away at the end of the day. Am I the only one? Or, you know, we here at the church, we finished up and we were home by about quarter past five after the, uh, the Christmas Day meal here at the church. And we sat home and we had some sandwiches ready and the biggest pork pie I've ever seen in my life. And it was very nice. And we just sat and then, uh, uh, um, and then afterwards, after my, my parents had gone home because we just pop around for, they were here all day with us and we just thought we'd have a bit of a muck time in the evening together quickly and then clearly Christmas Day for me has to end in praise and worship of no no it doesn't it ended watching Doctor Who that was a letdown and um, but you know you just that big build up and then oh it's Boxing Day yeah and you wake up the next morning and some of you might have woken up really late because you had a line because the alarm didn't need to go off. My alarm didn't need to go off, but my internal alarm decided six o'clock in the morning was a good time for me to wake up. Me and my internal alarm clock have had a word. But this is an odd time of year. And then you notice is everybody tends to get back to normal life, don't they, afterwards, yeah? Am I the only one? No? I mean, I've been on annual leave this week, but when you look around, everybody goes back to doing shopping, sales shopping. Goodness me, we went to Stratford on Friday. Sardine Stratford can't move because everybody's around shopping in Westfield. No, I hate shopping with lots of people around. It's an odd time of year and then we're sort of anticipating tonight, aren't you? People have got parties going on in their houses. People are coming to churches or going to other churches to celebrate with big crowds of people. Some people are going to bed at 10 o'clock at night. But this week is a no man's land. For me it is anyway. Am I the only one? It feels an in-between period of time. Unless, of course, you have a wedding anniversary that you're celebrating. But for me, this is a far weird time of the week. I see it truly as no man's land. And the whole teaching this entire December has been expect the unexpected, yes? And it has come in ways and, 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 and in areas even I wasn't expecting. So I've been experiencing the unexpected. And I'll be upfront, it hasn't all been pleasant, I can assure you. I'm not going to unpack that any further, but there's been some great pleasant periods of time in this last month. But this week, I have just felt like a nomad, a bit of a wanderer, not quite sure what to do with myself, you know? Am I the only one, no? Okay. So who does stuff? Come on then, what, what, what's anybody else done this week? Anybody want to tell me what they've done after Boxing Day between now and... and I skate in with, the, with like all my family. Cool. Oh, jealous I am now. Anybody else? What else have you done this week? Ends? You want to say something? Oh, you pointed to Caden, are you? <laughs> Caden, don't worry about it. I went to my sister's house with my brother and my mum. Okay, cool, brilliant. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, you better nod. Mum's at the back, nod. Right, anybody else? Adults, it doesn't have to be just the children. Oh, okay. I uh, went to see Jumanji and Superman this week. 
Superman. No, it begins the other way. S, mate. Star Wars. Uh, the, the Last Jedi. Last Jedi, yeah. And do you prefer Jumanji or Last Jedi? Be careful who's now asking you that question. Jumanji. <laughs> Anybody else? Dennis is not here today. I had a lovely time on Friday. I had a coffee with a neighbour, something we've been, we've been meaning to do for years. We actually got together, went to Costa's and had a nice coffee. Cool. Anybody else? Come on. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just didn't see your arm out. Oh. So we went on holiday. Um, came back yesterday. Had a lovely family time. Christmas Day by the beach. Good. <clears throat> And well, I went to my nana's house yesterday and I had a really fun time. Good, brilliant. There you go. Anybody else want to confess up what they did? Is it just me? You visited friends. On Christmas Day, I was in the kitchen cooking, baking frying fish because I was having the three generation come down for Boxing Day. So Boxing Day, there was four generation in the house and we had a great time. Excellent. Thank you, Doral. Okay. See, so you all did things. But these are not things you would normally do, would they, the rest of the year? It's because you had that in-between week. You had space, yeah? You make time. When's the last time some of you saw your friends that you saw this week? Ages, exactly. It's a weird time of year. And you're thinking, where is the pastor going with this? Well, I want to read Luke chapter 2, verses 21 to 40. Eight days later, when the baby was circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel even before he was conceived. Then it was time for the purification offering, as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The law of the Lord says, if a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So they offered the sacrifice required to the law of the Lord, either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Well, that's Mary and Joseph. So you've got two periods of time happening, just quickly. Firstly, it's eight days later, and for a Jewish boy, they're to be circumcised. We won't unpack that any further. And then later on, so this is not eight days later, this is a lot later. Jesus is then needing to be taken to Jerusalem. So the fact he had to be taken to Jerusalem clearly took a number of days to go. But that whole passage just shows, quite frankly, that actually Joseph and Mary, etc., were pious people. They followed the commands of the Lord. They did as they were told and instructed by the law of Moses, yes? Okay, so part of them, their plan was, you must go and do this so go and present and get him circumcised and now take him to the temple in Jerusalem and present him to the Lord as an offering so they did as they're told now after the excitement of having the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ even though they didn't know he was the Lord then but the excitement of a baby they still continue to follow certain procedures yes we worked out two weeks ago. They didn't have a clue what was going on, but they did that. So here we go on. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him. And he had revealed and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord, as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations 
And he is the glory of your people, Israel. Just leave it there for a moment. Again, we've got Simeon here being a righteous and devout man, a man who follows the Lord. And he has been eagerly anticipating Christmas. Well, at least anticipating the Messiah coming. I want to note again that the Holy Spirit is completely at work in this activity. Have you noticed that the Holy Spirit is upon him? And the Holy Spirit has revealed to him that he will not die until he has seen the Messiah. So imagine every day waking up knowing that you will not die until you have seen the Lord's Messiah. Yeah? If he's been revealed to him, you will not die until you've seen the Lord. You could almost walk around with a sense of immortality, can't you? Well, until I see the Lord's Messiah, I'm all right, Jack. Let's walk under the ladders. But for me, here, Simeon is being led by the Spirit on all occasions. By the way, this is prior to Jesus even dying on the cross, sending us the Holy Spirit, which for all believers now resides in each and every one of us. Amen? But actually, as we see in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit, he poured out onto people for special occasions. And Simeon here is one of those special occasions. But he is in constant waiting, isn't he? Will it be today that I will see the Lord's Messiah? Will it be today? Constantly in waiting every day. It's been revealed to him, but he's got to carry on with normal life, hasn't he? He's got to eat, shop, go to the temple every Saturday. But he's in that constant no man's land of waiting. Will today be the day that I see the Lord's Messiah, the Savior? Will today be Christmas Day? How weird does that feel? I wonder if he's sitting there constantly was searching. Oh, I wonder if that's going to be it. And here's the question for you. Did he think he was probably going to meet a man rather than a baby? We assume that Simeon knew it was a baby he was going to meet to know it was the Lord's Messiah. But I would humbly suggest that he was trained by his own culture to be looking for a man. One like King David. Waiting to see the Lord at work. Waiting. Being expectant. Today is the day that I'm going to see the Lord's Messiah. And I wonder how many times Simeon might have turned around and gone, How long, Lord? How many times did he go to bed disappointed that it hadn't happened that day? Don't forget this is a devout man, a Jewish man who is living in occupied Jerusalem. Yeah, the Romans have got control. And within, we know that within their own arena, they were expecting their Messiah to come and kick out the Romans. So they're spending every day with the oppression of the Romans being around. So he must be sitting thinking, come on, Lord, where's this Messiah? When are you going to answer the prayers of the people? When's it going to happen? And maybe he woke up some days going, today's going to be the day. And then it wasn't. How disappointing does that feel? And there'd be other days he'd wake up and go, today's going to be the day. And it wasn't. He goes, oh, well, it wasn't today. But it'd be one day because I've got the promise of the Lord. And so then Simeon was there, being led by the Spirit to this temple. 
And there you go. Was he really expecting that day, other than being led by the Spirit? And then he saw this child. And he took the child in his arms. And it was revealed to him by the Spirit that this child is the Messiah. Now, he immediately glorified God. Whether it was what he was expecting or not is another matter. But he glorified God. I just want to take a moment. You know, I asked you, where did you go today? Where did you go this week? And you all told us where you went, yeah? And what you did, yeah? You had fun, yes? And you did things. Imagine this for a minute. Say Mary and Joseph woke up that morning and went, I'm too tired. Can't be bothered to go to the temple with him today. Had a rough night last night. He kept me up all night, Jesus, crying his eyes out. Let's not live under the illusion. He was still a child, a baby, a child. Yeah, like all children. He may not slept as well as some parents would like. Maybe they had a rough night. I I just can't be bothered. Mary went, nah, nah, Joseph, look, seriously, I just want to sit here and do nothing all day and just watch the cows go by, yeah? Could you imagine that? Maybe they didn't follow the law of the Lord that day. And they said, we can do it next week, it's all right. We'll do it next week. It's no problem. The Lord will understand. We'll we'll give a guilt offering or something, and and we'll be all right next week, yeah? Is this ringing any bells with anyone? And imagine Simeon, that day, decided to not be led by the Holy Spirit. Imagine for that one day, Simeon decided, I'm going to ignore God. Every day I've been waiting to see the Messiah, and every day I've been let down. Well, today's the day I'm just going to say, and I'm not bothering. Could you imagine? If either of them at that moment had decided not to be obedient, guess what? That moment wouldn't be in the Bible. That divine appointment wouldn't have happened. Isn't that something? And that tells us about us and our walk with God. That we should be led by the Spirit and by the commands of the Lord. It's no good picking and choosing what we want when we feel like it. We should be led by the Spirit. And we could be missing out on divine appointments with people. God might well want to use us to lift somebody else's spirits up. To speak into their lives. But if we go, I can't be bothered. Had a rough night last night. Now, there's nothing wrong with having rough nights, but you should be more going, Lord, is it all right if I don't go here today? Let's be honest, how many of us would like to put the duvet over our heads and go back to sleep on a Sunday morning? Come on. Yeah, it's all right. Everybody can admit it. Come on, there are times. Come on. I've done that before now, and the old joke came out, and I said, I don't want to go to church today, I don't want to go to church today. Why do I have to go to church today? And Joyce says, well, you're the pastor, that's why you have to go to church today. That was a joke. But for me, this is part of this no man's land. We can spend our days wandering, thinking, well, this is just another normal day. It's not. It could be a day of divine appointment. Divine meeting, the conversation you can have, the moment you can have, you could suddenly be sparking off a moment that God wants to happen. Amen? And if we don't do it, if we don't follow the Spirit, it doesn't happen, does it? You know, if you, if you decided to wake up and think, oh, do you know, I can't be bothered to see my friends tonight. Oh, I'm just not in the mood. Yeah, I'm tired. Then you're not going to see them, are you? And it could be months later when you get to see them again. It's not good. And that's the same with God and the divine appointments he gives us. That always got me with that with Simeon, uh, Joseph and Mary. If they hadn't been obedient, all three of them, it would never, 
ever have happened? Here's a question for you. What if Jesus wanted to go to the temple that day? He was a normal child. Let's not live under the illusion here. He was a normal child at this point, okay? I think we do need to recognize that in some way. He still acted like a kid. I wonder if he won't. Nah. I, I, no, mommy, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to go to the temple. Anybody ever experienced that as a parent? I don't want to go. I don't want to go. But if Jesus didn't go in, he may not have had that divine appointment. Can we not live under the illusion that Jesus was instantly uh, knew everything that was going on? Because it makes it very clear in Luke that he grew in wisdom, knowledge and stature. He had to learn and grow. He was like every other normal human being. Don't forget, he didn't do any miracles until the Holy Spirit was poured out upon him at his baptism. So I just don't want to make that clear. I'm not degrading our Lord Jesus Christ by actually probably actually saying, I'm actually lifting him up because if he was able to face every temptation we face, doesn't that make our lives a little bit think, well, if he resisted, means I can as well. So, divine appointments. This is what happened. Now, just to finish off. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, but he will be a joy to many others. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Now, first and foremost, Simeon has made it very clear that Jesus is for all nations, all people. Amen? He's going to be the glory of Israel, but not just for Israel. He's going to be for all nations. There's a distinct difference, by the way. And what gets me is that Jesus' parents were amazed. Why were they amazed? I mean, they had an angel visitation telling them you're going to be pregnant. And that's without the other bit. You're going to have the best Christmas present. And here you go. But yet still they're amazed what was said about him. Maybe it is like a Christmas present. Opened it up, but hadn't fully read all the instructions and how it operates. Who's got one of them? Come on. Who got something open went, oh, I know how this works. Yes, normally it's the men that do this. Yes, I know how this works. I will undo the battery, put the batteries in. And, and then after a while thinks, how comes this is not working? Read the instructions. And so they were amazed because they still did not fully understand what this son was. And then we have Simeon stating the very obvious that this Messiah, who's salvation himself, will cause many to stumble by his message of salvation. Others will fall because, and for other people who should know better, they will oppose him. And many will oppose us because we are his representatives. Yes? And therefore, what I do like is in Hebrews 4, it says, he is like a sword that will split apart those who work for God and those who do not. Jesus is divisive, I'm afraid. He is almost like that Christmas present. I want it. No, I want it. No, I want it. I want it. Yeah? But he is divisive. In this no man's period, our Jesus is not somebody who we should just assume is always just lovey-dovey. So I can imagine if I was Mary or Joseph hearing those stories about Jesus and going, who is this child that I've got? Who is this child whose nappy I just changed this morning? Jesus is not someone to be messed with. I love it. One of the commentators said this. In other words, we've received from Simeon an unmistakable anticipation of coming conflict surrounding the mission of Jesus and are aware that his opposition will arise from within God's own people. 
What shape will this take? What will its meaning be? And these have all been left open by Luke for us to develop our own understanding as we go along the journey across no man's land. Jesus is about divine appointment, amen? And he has come and he has caused conflict, amen? He's been abused to create conflict where he didn't want any, but he does create conflict. His message of salvation does split people apart, amen? And amen, you're going to have to just go with it. But he is the best Christmas present. And he doesn't need batteries. So I don't know about you today, leading into tomorrow, leading into for the rest of 2018. But being guided by the Holy Spirit as we have looked at the whole of this December, expecting the unexpected, as Mary and Joseph did not know about their son, still. I want you to be people. I want us to be people. I think, believe that God wants us to be people who to expect the unexpected and to be guided by his spirit at all times. That also involves reading the word of God. Because we have to test the spirits against the word of God. And as much as it is sometimes tempting to wake up and go, I can't be bothered this morning. God is saying, you could be missing out on a divine appointment. Ask me first. Be guided by me. God never wants us to burn ourselves into the ground, ever. But we are willful people, are we not? So expect the unexpected. His burden is easy. His yoke is light. Imagine what Simeon must have thought afterwards, eh? Yes! Done it! Lord, please take me. My struggle is all over. Give you a few moments just to think. Listen to God for yourself. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.